uh, we're going to have to do a, a little extra lesson on another way of writing our solution sets when we have intervals of numbers. And when we have inequalities, that's when that shows up. Uh, where interval notation, believe it or not, is a much more elegant way in some cases to uh, show what a set is. Uh, you just have to keep in mind that you can only use it for the real number set uh, on a number line. It's, it's only done for one variable at a time. So you can't do this for multiple variables. Some things to keep in, in the back of your head is that interval notation is shorthand for the number line. So that means that order matters. Like if you're representing an interval, the smallest number always has to be on the left-hand side, and the larger number has to be on the right-hand side. Uh, parentheses means not inclusive, so the open circle is equivalent to a parenthesis, and the closed circle would be equivalent to the brackets. Uh, that means inclusive. Um, it's also a, a lot of times we can represent uh, a number set. So if you remember from middle school, or maybe even elementary school when you did uh, inequalities, this here is going to be x. Oh, let me see if it'll write here. x is less than 2, like this. It could also have been drawn with a parenthesis. Like sometimes in the upper levels uh, books, you'll see something like this, where the, instead of using an open circle, they use a parenthesis to indicate the end of a set. It's a soft end instead of a hard end, meaning like all the values up until, that's why they use a parenthesis there, as opposed to I'm including, and this is a stopping at two. Now it's just gonna be uh, anything up until two. Set builder notation, just like you did for solving in one variable, uh, when you did equations, x such that x is less than two. And in interval notation, now you have to think, the smallest number on the number line is, it goes on forever to negative infinity. So on the in, in interval notation, we actually use negative infinity, the negative infinity symbol. So the lowest value is negative infinity and the highest value is anything right before two. And it's not including the two, so I have to need uh, use a parenthesis. And for uh, infinity and negative infinity, we're gonna be using infinity eventually. Um, it's important that you don't put a bracket on that because infinity is kind of a concept. It's never a, a set value. It's always, you can always, in, for negative infinity, you can always subtract one more and get further down the number line. So therefore, it's not a set value you're stopping at. It's that we're going toward negative infinity. And the way to indicate that is to have negative infinity with a parenthesis. Um, a common mistake that I see is people do this. Two to negative infinity. But because interval notation is shorthand for the number line, two is not less than negative infinity. You always have to have the smallest number to the left. So that would be incorrect. You must have the negative infinity to the left. And if you ever have to use positive infinity, that's always the one that's gonna be all the way to the right. Now I want you to try the second one. Instead, it's gonna be an inclusive rather than a, an um, not inclusive, so therefore you're going to have to use a bracket in interval notation. I'm going to pause it, and so should you while you try that one. Hopefully you're back again. I put the set builder, in this case is less than or equal to because it's inclusive, and in the uh, interval notation it goes from negative infinity up to, but including four, so now we're going to have the hard bracket. It has a set and a, a, an abrupt stop at four. Um, if I was going to draw that using this type of, of ends, I would put a bracket on the number line at four and then draw it to the left. Again, some books have this. Sometimes when you come across it online, you'll see that again. It, uh, the next one, I'm going to the right instead. So we have x such that x is greater than or equal to, what is it, zero? So if I'm doing that in interval notation, no, not equal to, sorry, it's just greater than, whoopsies. So it's just greater than, and therefore over here in interval notation, the lowest number is just after zero. So anything just after zero, that's why I use the parentheses, and it's gonna go up to infinity like that. And it's important that you have infinity to the right now because zero is less than any value toward infinity. 
Now I'm going to pause it again, pause the video, and try to do the second one on your own. Okay, so now we're back again. If you, uh, let me see, here you can see it past my face here. Um, I, again, in, it's inclusive, so it's a greater than or equal, x is greater than or equal to negative four, and in interval notation, the lowest number is negative four, inclusive up to infinity. So in this case, we would write it like this. If we move on to the next problem, this is a between the statement. There's not an arrow on the end, so it's all the values in between negative one and four. The way we indicate that is to write a between this statement. So it's negative one is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to four, like that. Interval notation, it's the lowest value is negative one, and it's all the values up to and including four. Now try, you should be able to do the next two on your own. So I'm gonna pause the video again. And then once you've done those, unpause and I should have the answers for you. Okay, so let's see how we did. First of all, my between the statements, because the X's are actually in a in set builder, X is on the number line between negative two and three. So I'm physically putting X in between, just as a thought. Don't write it with an and, or with, it's definitely wrong with an or, but do not write them as two separate statements. You're gonna write it together in one statement. Now, if there are different parts to the graph, then you need to use the word or in there. But if you use the word or and separated the two statements, it would not be true. It wouldn't be the answer. It would be all real numbers technically. And if you write the word and, it means, oh, there's more work to be done. I'm supposed to find the intersection of these two and then you would tell me what the answer is. So in this case, the only way to complete this in set builder is writing a between this statement because it's all the values in between. And here for interval notation, especially for these, it's a lot more elegant as you can see. All right, so what happens when all of the numbers are covered? That in, in the set builder, it's all real numbers. So the way we indicate that is x such that x is an element in the real number set. So you write a scripty R for the real number set. That's how to write that correctly. Um, I, I know that in the computer you may do this like really fancy R. I just double line the R to indicate that it's a number set of real numbers. And for the um, interval notation, it's the whole number line. So the lowest number, well, that's toward negative infinity and the highest number is toward positive infinity. So to indicate the real numbers, whoops, is to say it goes from negative infinity to infinity. There you go. For the next set, now you have two parts of it. And I couldn't, when I was making these graphs, for some reason I wouldn't put arrows on the ends, but they're supposed to have arrows on here. So now we have two separate parts to it. In set builder notation, you have to use the word or. It's either on this segment or this segment. Do not use a comma and do not use the word and. Logically, they mean different things. So you're gonna have to write x such that x is less than negative three or the word or has to be there or x is greater than one in interval notation you're going to say okay i'm going to take the lowest branch of this it's going to be negative infinity up to negative three not inclusive union so this is equivalent to or but you use union symbol in in interval notation you use the word or in set builder notation don't mix the two and then we have from one to infinity. And now I'm gonna pause it and you're gonna try the next one down here. And again, these were supposed to have arrows on these and only arrow on this end here. So sorry about that. I'm gonna pause it. You're gonna try the last two on your own. Every segment in set builder or every piece in set builder is gonna be separated by the word or, and in interval notation, you're gonna use the union symbol. Okay, so we're back again. And again, uh, for the second to last one, uh, there are two sec sections to it. In set builder, I, I put the word or in between. What's nice about set builder, you could switch it. You could have written x is greater than or equal to negative six or x 
is less than negative seven. But in interval notation, you must have this, the segment or the ray in this case that is to the left must be physically to the left in interval notation. You cannot switch them around the union symbol. You always have to have the lowest value to the left and the highest to the right. They have to be in numeric order in interval notation because it's just shorthand for the number line, so I don't have to draw it. That's basically what I want you to think in the back of your head. Um, for the next one, you have a ray and then a line segment. So I indicated the ray in set builder notation from negative, uh, which is x is less than or equal to one. Um, or you could be between three and seven where three is included. In interval notation, personally, I think it's a lot more elegant and a little easier to comprehend when you see something uh, a little more condensed like this. That's the basics of interval notation. Please try some of the other ones on your own.